I'm Malika Yasjerdi, uh, the director of Dubai Watch Week and the head of corporate communication at Ahmed Sidibi & Sons. You know, when we had the, uh, the first GPHG event back in 2013, uh, after we wrapped it up in November, we started looking at, you know, the feedback from the market, not just the journalists and the collectors, but the general watch enthusiasts and watch fans. And um, the feedback that we got was amazing. We wanted to incorporate a lot of those inputs and create something that catered to the needs. And over the past year and a half, or almost two years, we've been listening to those needs. We've been collecting information, collecting data. And last year, in November, we started formulating the idea for a watch week in Dubai. We knew we wanted to have an interesting program that was accessible to the public as well as private collectors. But we also wanted to make sure that it had an educational and cultural aspect. For us, it's, uh, it's really, really important to keep supporting the Swiss watch industry and raise awareness for the different issues that the industry is facing, for the different topics that are you know, current topics within the Swiss watch industry. But most importantly, the Siddiqui family has a very deep-rooted connection with the Swiss watch industry. It goes over 65 years you know, with the founder, the late Ahmed Siddiqui, and now the fourth generation family members working in the family business. So it is, an, it is a personal affair with the Swiss watch industry. It's an emotional affair. And, and it, we always say that the Swiss watch industry or watches are embedded in the DNA of all the Siddiqui family members. I remember uh, Carlos saying that this is a very over ambitious project. Are you sure you want to do this? I said, yes, you know, it's, it's long overdue and it's time that we give public what they're asking for. So we started working on the idea and my wish list initially had 24 spokespeople. We have 57 today and it's really snowballed into what the Dubai Watch Week has become. I mean, we hope, you know, we are very ambitious and, and we always like to think big and make sure we deliver on those promises. Um, we had amazing programs that came up. I mean, there were two other exhibitions that I really wanted to have as part of this program this year, but unfortunately due to size limitations, we couldn't incorporate them into this year's category. But we also had a lot of enthusiasm and interest from brands, not only brands in our portfolio, but the brands in general. And the Dubai Mall exhibition is really an extension of that feedback that we've received from market because we wanted to have the GPHG exhibition and the independent exhibition for 10 brands. Now we have an additional 16 brands participating in Dubai Mall. So that gives you an idea on, on the level of partnership from the watch industry. But most importantly, we wanted to make sure that we do something that is continuous as well. I don't think we would at any point like to make it unaccessible to people. That is not the strategy that we have in mind for Dubai Watch Week. The success of Dubai Watch Week really depends on having access to these individuals that people normally don't get access to. But also to make sure that they connect with the audience and they connect with people, not just the collectors, but also people who are enthusiastic about watches, who are passionate about watches, but not necessarily collectors. And the mentorship and the scholarship program that we have lined up for this year is also an indication of that. I mean, we've got a mentorship program that's targeted purely at journalism here in the region. And it is a subject uh, that a lot of people don't like to talk about, but the art of journalism, as far as watchmaking is concerned, is not fine-tuned in this part of the world, and the mentorship program is going to help us do that. And with the scholarship program, we're giving anyone who is based here in the UAE an opportunity to become a watchmaker. So these are some of the programs that we are you know, giving access to the public, and this is what we want to continue doing for the future editions of Dubai Watch Week. It's, it's really interesting that you bring up that subject. We've actually seen a shift in the watch industry this year. I mean, I'm sure at Basel World and SIHH, you notice that a lot of watch brands are now focusing on the female audience, which was not the case before. You have big names in the industry that are moving away from courts, moving into automatic movements. They're focusing on complications and they're focusing on much more than the aesthetic look of a watch to, to you know, tap into the female sector, and especially in this part of the world. People are becoming a lot more educated. They're educating themselves. The, you know, the internet and, and online information is, is a wonderful platform for learning. And people have access to that information. So the way they walk into the shop, they don't know, you know, they don't look for what's what's a watch with the most number of diamonds or, or if it is gold or rose gold. Now they're looking for movements and complication. And I think the watch industry has responded to those demands and those those requests. And this is why this year we saw a lot of big names coming up with specific automatic movements for the female audience and we tried as much as we can to make sure that the Dubai Watch Week also incorporates those needs. Watches as a fashion statement panel is, is an indication of that. We have Miroslava Duma on the, speaking on the last day 
you know, who is one of the biggest fashion icons in the world, but to talk about the importance of watches as a fashion accessory, but also to make sure that this is something that women can get into and collect. We have Roberto Moraro, uh, you know, family business that's been doing bespoke handmade suits in Napoli for a very long time, you know, over 70 years, talking about watches because he's also personally a collector. So it's, it's trying to cater really to, to all those people and tapping into the different target markets. You have young collectors, you have old collectors. We have a, a young kid coming called Arthur Apparati, who is a very young collector at the age of 15, who's also going to be talking about collecting vintage watches because he specifically collects vintage watches. So we tried as much as we can to, to have a platform for every single target market and audience and, and try to tap into the younger audience, the female market sectors, the serious collectors. And the panel of speakers that we blind up is really an indication of that. We have already a couple of exhibitions that we have reserved for the next edition. What we want to do with the future editions of Dubai Watch Week is every Dubai Watch Week, we want to focus on a topic. The topic, the current issue uh, this year or for the watch industry was transmission of knowledge. We've seen that with you know, Monsieur Philippe Defour and Mr. Stephen Forsay focusing on that since 2012. And the transmission of knowledge or the retirement of a lot of these master watchmakers is a hot topic in the watch industry. And as uh, Max Booster said this morning, they are endangered species. And so we really wanted to focus on that topic. So I think we have to look at the needs of the market. We also have to look at the current issues in the Swiss watch industry and try to create a program that caters to those needs or, or focuses on those particular topics. Whatever those topics are in the future, whether they're going to more, you know, focus more on the female audience or whether they're going to talk about getting into specific movements, you know, getting young collectors, hiring young watchmakers, whatever the topic is, we're going to try to cater to that. But at the same time as well, create a platform where we try to educate as much as possible. This year, the education was more about the independent watchmakers you know, the next edition could be something else. And, uh, you know, the world of timekeeping is so broad. There are so many amazing topics to talk about. And I think we're really spoiled for choice as far as topics are concerned. Yeah, that's brilliant. I, again, want to thank you very much for your lovely hospitality and uh, having all of us over here. It's been a fantastic year, and I uh, wish you all the continued success. Thank you so much, Bonu, and it's really a pleasure to have all of you here. We're super excited, and um, and I think we're, we're really... You know, looking forward to wrapping this up and seeing the overall feedback from everyone across the industry to know what are the needs that we need to look into for the next edition of Dubai Watch Week. Thank you very much. Thank you.